Hey all, it's Rafi. And today I'm playing a 15 minute game just to give you guys the intro. D4, G6, C4, Bishop, G7. This is kind of like the King's Indian um, defense. So typically Black will play moves like Knight F6, D6 to try to control the E5 square and then he will castle. And then he will strike at the center with E5 or C5 in these kind of openings. It's often called a perk defense if it started after e4, d6. Mm. He takes a slightly novel approach with the d e6 move. That is interesting. Um, trying to think, do I want to play e4 and take away that possibility of him playing this move? Mm. If e4, then d5, then takes, 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 I get a pawn. So let's go ahead and just take over the center completely and just follow some basic opening principles here. Snake Eye is 2206. What a what a name. Rapid 2047. He's only played 20 games. Interesting. So knight e7. Okay. So he wants to play d5 next, I think. I'll play the bishop to e3 here because what I want to do is play bishop other other bishop to e2 or d3, play the knight to e. I'm sorry, other bishop to d3, knight to e2, and then castle. That's my idea here. So this is like a queen's Indian sort of structure now, double fee and kettle variation. <clears throat> Very interesting way way to play. The hedgehog actually is what they call it, I believe. Hedgehog setup with pawns on e6, d6, and then the two bishops being being kettled. Kind of interesting setup. The best way I know to play against this is to totally take over the center completely, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Now I'm going to perpetually make his pieces weak. Well, that's the goal. If I take here, that's not gonna be good. If I allow him to take, that's not good either, so I need to push it here. Let's go ahead and push the pawn. And castles. That's interesting. Hmm. trying to think what to do here I really need to get my knight I really want to get my knight to f3 it's one of the things I want to do 
So king h1, knight g1, knight f3, knight g5 is one idea that I have. But I think I have more constructive moves before I do all that. Such as playing maybe b4, taking over the queen side uh, and expanding there as well. But I really need to be careful with moves like c5. He can totally tear apart my my structure here, so I have to be careful. Let's continue natural moves first, though. Let's play rook c1, get our rook activated. Hmm, h5, interesting. He wants to grab some space on this side of the board now. Now, since things are so locked up, I think I have enough time to play moves like king h1. He'll play h4, knight g1. If he plays h3, knight takes h3, solves the problem. And if he doesn't, then I play knight f3 at that point. And then route the knight to g5 to attack e6. Or should I play queen c2, rook d1? Takes d6, he takes d6, then knight here. Well, that really opens up this bishop, so I don't want to really do that either. Let's continue our plan of rerouting this knight. Hmm. What an interesting idea. We'll split rook here and then just push this pawn down. All right. I got. I, I get the idea. He must play rook h8, then play h4, h3. And now if knight f3, then h3, then check, and I pick up the knight. I mean the pawn. Now check, I can win this pawn. But he plays here. Check, king g8 takes. I hit the queen. At the very least, I can come back here, actually. So let's go for it. Come back to g5 and then block this this way, maybe, or something. I don't know. Oh, he resigned. Kind of an early resignation in my opinion, but I mean, okay. Wow. I didn't think it was completely lost for black yet, but maybe he thinks so. King g8, knight takes here. Is this queen getting trapped or something? Like, what's the reason? First of all, he can play h3. That looks pretty strong. But if he were to move his queen, then where would he move it to b8? And I play h3 and I block everything, and the position is terrible for him. Okay, I see. So instead, if he plays this, then this, then this, 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 this should takes. Rook takes, and this position is really bad for for black. I can see why. But still, I mean, I, I don't think, I mean, I don't know. I don't think it was it was worth resigning, though. And he's kind of a new player on the, on the you know, in the, in the, 
on the site here. But he's looks like he's beaten some strong players. Um, 21 games so far. Anyway, let's analyze. Two mistakes, two inaccuracies, 44 average centipon loss. Okay, so d4, e, uh, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c. So e4 here is pretty good, I see. Okay. The idea of knight f6 first, usually black, the way black plays this is pl first hit here, then he plays here. And the idea behind is that white won't have e4. In this variation, in this way of playing it, I can just I could have played e4 here, and if knight here now, then it's really annoying. Well, he wouldn't play maybe knight in for, right away, but he played something like that. I don't know, maybe c4. If here, then there's this, and that's not good. There's also this, and this knight is always going to come under some fire here. Anyway, that's not what he went for at all. He played. And that's kind of where. Excuse me. So here, computer suggests an interesting move, h4. Taking up some space on this side of the board. That's interesting. I didn't go for that kind of thing. I just went for the direct e4, taking over the center more. Bishop e3, developing the bishop and trying to bring the other bishop out. I played the bishop e3 move just so um, this pawn wouldn't be blocked or take under attack after bishop d3. The idea of bishop d3 being that I want to put the knight on e2 instead of f3. Why do I want to put it on e2? Because I have some more potentials of guarding the center with, with uh, e2. And oftentimes the knight goes to g3 and helps to stop the f5 ideas and things like that in these it's not really this type of structure that works very well, but that's kind of how I play against the King's Indian type of openings. So I just kind of naturally drove for that sort of setup, but maybe here it didn't make sense, that much sense to put the knight on e2. Maybe knight f3 was better. So here I just continued with f4, getting more space. He plays f5. And here I really wanted to blunt his dark square bishop. But by doing so, I opened up his light square bishop. So maybe there's a computer suggesting the d5 move was interesting to consider here. Play this one. Castle. castles. Now I just continued playing regular developing moves like rook c1, but apparently bishop c2 opening up the d file for the queen was better. Hmm. I did consider b4 as well, by the way, in this position, but I thought that this diagonal would become pretty powerful. That's why I wanted to play the rook here first, but maybe then could consider moves like a3, b4, and stuff like that. But this loses a lot of my advantage. And I think it's because of this line. Yeah, I was thinking about it, that he would do this at some point. I thought if he did that, I would take with the D pawn, but maybe this is a little bit better. And now my center is totally falling apart. Just tearing it down. Tearing down my entire center. Makes sense why rook c1 was not the best idea. Because if rook on rook c1 and bishop c2, then if he does this, I guess he can still go for this side sort of setup, but I feel like I retained some advantage here because of his weaknesses on e6 and stuff like that.
So H5, yeah, I really don't know about that move because that just kind of creates some weaknesses around his king. And I mean, gaining space on this side of the board doesn't really do much, but I think he was very determined to get this idea going with H4 and H3. You know, aggressive type of idea, but I think it just kind of backfired on him a lot. Here, our computer doesn't like my move king h1 at all. It prefers the bishop c2 move still. Interesting. I was kind of thinking of it more of a, from a strategic standpoint. I don't know if the tactics necessarily favor me with the king h1 move. That's probably what it is, but I thought it was kind of a cool idea to get the knight to f3 and to g5. This king f7 was really weird. I just was like, what? <laughs> when I saw that. So computer probably won't like my knight g1 either. Yeah, he doesn't like it. Because I'm undeveloping a piece and it's just, it's not really locked up enough for me to go for that kind of long-term maneuvering right now. It's still lots of possibilities for things to open up here. Bishop f3, queen f3, d takes c5. Interesting. Bishop, bishop f3, queen f3, c5 is also a line here. Interesting. Is this? Check. You know, I, th I thought this would, this would, um, Play out as if you would play something like that i take here and i thought maybe if he moves this queen at least i can come back here and stop this h3 stuff so maybe he moves here i thought i was just going to come back and stop this but i had much better moves here probably just like h3 itself it's much better but yeah anyway he resigned here after this move which i think is kind of prem premature but the position is obviously lost according to the computer and things like that but I just feel like there was still a lot of play left, practically speaking, especially at you know, our level of chess. Hopefully you guys got something out of this miniature game. And uh, I look forward to catching you guys in my next video. Take care.